Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. It's late March in Radford, Virginia. I'm in Radford's Urban Forest Wildwood Park, right in the middle of the heart of this city, which is on the New River in the Appalachian Mountains. And here we have our spring woodland wildflowers beginning to emerge. and I can see them all around me. Spring woodland wildflowers, also known as the ephemeral wildflowers, are my absolute favorite because in order to see them, you have to go into the woods and you have to go into the woods at this time of the year. They bloom for only a very short period of time. In fact, their whole life cycle occurs between now and before the leaves come out on the trees. This way they can take advantage of abundant sunshine and they've adapted to growing in low temperatures. They will grow up, flower, seed, and then wither away and just disappear in the matter of four to six weeks. They're really amazing. Today's episode is about one of my favorite woodland wildflowers that's called Dutchman's Breeches. And in this episode, I'll tell you how it's got its name and some fascinating biology about how it reproduces. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. The scientific name of Dutchman's breeches is Dicentra cucularia, and its common name, of course, is Dutchman's breeches. And how did it get its name? Well, look at these flowers. What do they look like? And they are said to look like a Dutchman's sailor's pantaloons hanging on a clothesline, flapping in the breeze. It's just such an intriguing and unusual shaped flower. Notice how this flower hangs essentially upside down with the opening straight down towards the ground. And it has these two spurs. Well, the nectaries are in the back of these spurs. This is a native plant. It grows in rich woodland soils where it stays very moist. And in fact, here in Wildwood Park, I can find it on this side of the hill, but on the, which is the northern side, but over on the other side here, there's another hill and it's much drier and there's no Dutchman's breeches there at all. So these two spurs on the flower is where the nectar is kept. The function of nectar is to attract bees to move pollen from flower to flower and fertilize it. Well, being a native plant, this was fertilized by native bees that are active at this time of the year. And what are native bees that are active at this time of the year when it's still pretty chilly out on many days? It's the bumblebee. And how does a bumblebee function at these temperatures? Well, it's got that big heavy body which holds in the heat better and it's covered with fur which also holds in the heat. So they're able to be active before any other bees are active and they are the ones that are have evolved to pollinate these flowers. Also, since these two evolved together, the bumblebee's tongue is the only one long enough to reach in all the way to the back to where the nectar is. Honeybees can't reach it. However, as there's always exceptions in nature, there are some bees that learned how to cut off the back of these spurs and bypass the parts of the plant with the pollen and just directly get the nectar, essentially robbing this flower of its nectar. Another fascinating part of the ecology of this plant is how they spread their seeds. Stationary plants require some kind of mechanism to move seeds away from the flower, away from the mother plant, and spread to new locations. Otherwise, they'll die out and outcompete each other. So the mechanism that Dutchman's breeches has evolved to spread seeds is by developing an eliosome that is attached to the seeds. What's an eliosome? It's a fatty lipid deposit that includes proteins and vitamins and maybe some starches that are attached to the seed. What is its purpose? Its purpose is to attract ants. So ants will come up to the flower grab the seed, not to eat the seed, but to bring back the nutritious eliosome to their nests. So they'll bring the seeds back, remove the eliosome from the seed, 
and discard the seed with their debris. So these seeds are transported by ants seeking the eliasome to new locations and sometimes really great locations because they're in this ant debris which is rich in organics. So it's like it's a beautiful nutritious mulch for the seed to germinate in. So it's a perfect relationship between the ants and this plant. Dutchman's breeches, like many of these native plants, had medicinal value to the indigenous peoples that lived here. Dutchman's breeches, in fact, contains many biologically active compounds, including alkaloids, which are known to be pharmaceutically active. These alkaloids, however, are generally toxic to people and to grazing animals. These alkaloids tend to work on the brain and the nervous system. So another name for Dutchman's breeches, less commonly used, it's called staggerweed. And it's got its name staggerweed because horses and cows that would eat it would become ill, affecting their nervous system, affecting their ability to walk, and so they would stagger around after eating this. So staggerweed is the other common name of this plant. It has a, a history of medicinal uses in the past, but is generally regarded as being toxic today. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. I love the spring woodland wildflowers. Check out my channel for the series I have on that and my playlist where I feature a lot of the different spring woodland wildflowers. So get outside and enjoy the day. Go see what you can find. See what spring wildflowers are blooming in the woods near you. If you like my channel, please subscribe. It helps me spread this message and give me a like. And I love answering comments or questions from my viewers. So thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.